Understanding leverage and why it's crucial to maximizing your returns as a real estate investor. Listen, I hear comparisons made all the time about real estate versus the stock market, the stock market always coming out on top, etc. Look, if you're buying everything all cash in real estate, then guess what? You're not going to experience the potential benefits that real estate investing really has to offer. And that's what most of these comparisons assume. Now, let's talk about leverage. To make things simple, let's just pretend you buy a single family home for $100,000 all cash. And let's say you can rent that property out quickly at $1,000 a month. Let's also assume that you have $4,000 in expenses, including taxes and insurance for that year. So you end up with a net of $8,000 return after one year. Now, $8,000 divided by your initial investment of $100,000 is an 8% return. Not bad considering we're not even talk, taking into consideration likely appreciation and tax write-offs. Hey, but wait, how about this time we run the numbers again, only this time we say that you only put down 25%, so $25,000, and we take out a loan for the balance of $75,000 with a 30-year fixed rate mortgage of, let's say, 5% per year. Now that gives us a monthly mortgage payment of approximately $400 per month times 12 months equals $4,800. Now, let's still assume that you rent it out for $1,000 per month, so $12,000 per year. $12,000 minus our expenses of $4,000 and our mortgage of $4,800, and you end up with $3,200. Now, you might say, hey, that's peanuts compared to buying it all cash. I was making a lot more cash flow before. Okay, well, let's still not forget that you have $75,000 sitting in your bank account, plus we haven't run the numbers to find out our return yet. So let's do that. $3,200 divided by our investment of $25,000 equals a 13% return on your investment. That's 5% better than buying it all cash, and we still haven't even taken appreciation, equity buildup, or tax write-offs into consideration. Now, let's say you have a modest appreciation rate of 3% that first year. Now remember, you're benefiting from the appreciation of the entire property value, not just the $25,000 investment that you put down. So if we calculate the value of the property to be $103,000 at the end of the first year, your return on investment, or ROI, jumps to a whopping 23%. Now, sure, we didn't account for inflation, but go ahead and compare that to a stock portfolio. Plus, if we take into account the interest tax deduction that you have, you have an additional $3,400 tax write-off. Now keep in mind you still have $75,000 in your account to buy three more of these properties. And check this out. You own a physical asset that's insured. Hey, that means if the place burns down, your insurance company pays for you to rebuild. Try taking out an insurance policy on your mutual fund. Okay, so what if the market crashes? Well, so long as you have a tenant in there paying off your mortgage, you'll be able to pull through. If your stock portfolio crashes to nothing though, that's a different story. Look, you wanna be responsible with leverage but you also want to use it if you want to maximize your returns. Hey, we didn't even discuss multifamily properties, which is a whole other level of returns, my favorite subject, but we'll discuss that in another video. I'll see you then.